call this week of CW's television the week of earned moments and the difference between actual earned moments and the difference between, well, The Flash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, like, I'll protect them. Because Black Lightning has several earned moments and The Flash has none. Yeah. Because they uh, haven't uh, written a good season. And, uh, no, they've, uh, dropped they the haven't. Ball. This has been, or before I launch into a tangent, uh, this has been an abysmal season of The Flash. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you, you have said you hate season three more. I still do I hate season three more. Detest no, I do this not. Season so fucking much. I am longing for Savitar and you know uh, Draco Malfoy. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> when you bring up Tom Felton, yeah, I do enjoy Tom Felton, but I. Savitar made me so much more angry, just in general, than all of this. Um, I don't know why. I'm I'm not saying that this is better <laughs> by any means. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's about the same. To be in it. Like it's not better, but it's, it maybe it's just as bad. I don't even know. It's just not as infuriating to me at the moment. I because oh. like my usual argument is potential makes me more angry. You know what I mean? Like. There's a good movie inside of BVS, which makes me hate the theatrical cut of BVS even more. Uh, so, like, or even Alien Resurrection. There's good stuff in there. There's interesting ideas well, it's, in there. Yeah, it's like when you watch all the deleted scenes from Prometheus, and you're like, okay, this added context, mm -hmm. and you removed it. <laughs> there's, there's nothing worse than a tease, essentially. Like, if there's, like, oh, like a hint of something inside of it uh, I, I feel like i have a different point of view. like this bothers me more because it feels lazy it feels like they didn't take any time into it so then you're wasting my time because you put no time into it so it's just oh sucking my life away oh i totally the agree is that he has a plan he's gonna keep telling us he yeah. has a plan and he's never gonna tell us what his plan is. i mean I've, I've explained it many times this is season four like of arrow like 100 mm -hmm. percent. like it it's a carbon copy of the second half of arrow season four and that should make me more angry than anything, but I guess I'm just numb to disappointment. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> you've lived, lived and died on this hill, you, you, I've, you know. I've, 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 I've been here before, and I will be here again. Apparently, can't wait. You're till... the guy. You're the guy from the um from the old Halo live action commercials who is looking at the memorial, yep. um, of the, <laughs> of the last great battle of the fucking Covenant War. Yeah, that's me. Um. Anyway, I'm Connor McGraw. Welcome to this week's Phantom Zone review of the CW. And what a fucking inconsistent week this was. Yeah. Everything's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Who mm -hmm. else is here? Uh, A. A. Haro, as usual. Uh, Hunter Davenport, uh, I, uh, I read The Vision today, and I'm sad. Because it's really good, but also very, very sad. Mm. Soul-crushing. Uh, I'm Lou Gonzalez, and fuck you, Barry Allen. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking about Black Lightning first, because Black Lightning was, was undisputed best this week. This was the season finale of Black Lightning. It's this was great. Good. This uh, one? Yes. Yeah. They, uh, oh. Well, oh. Our, our, rate, our rankings actually had it tied with Arrow, but it's it's the finale, so why not give it the yeah. spotlight? Um, well, I think it's, it's objectively better than Arrow, I, but I Arrow didn't yeah. infuriate me more than Flash. An arrow is still in my head, rather, uh, which Supergirl is not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. We're, we're going to talk I... about Supergirl at some point, but, like... <sighs> I don't... I don't remember anything. All you need to remember is flying monkeys. That's all you... That's yep. And there was an there was an Academy Award nominated actress in this episode. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's gonna come up, and that's gonna be the also, thing that makes me dude, the most like, angry. Like also, they Eric said, Punisher. yeah, like Eric said, Supergirl washed over me. Uh, like, it was like I was a dying man on a beach, oh my and God, like I my God, my Supergirl. <laughs> So you're like Oliver in season one of Arrow. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like a dying man on the beach, and like, just I felt the waves crash over me, but it felt nothing because my life was going to end moments later. Right. Yeah, that's a common um, feeling that we all understand. We all yeah. relate to this. Uh, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, Black Lightning was a very Black Lightning earned all of its feel good moments this week. Yeah, it also earned ripping off the Punisher, which is <laughs> very strange. Uh, I don't know. I did love that. Um, uh, what's the one guy's name from uh, Mortal Kombat Two that's in this? I can't remember. <laughs> that's your reference point. I love. Yeah. That. Oh my god! What and the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I, 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 I did that on he purpose. Is, he is um, Ajax forever, you Philistine. No, I did it so, on purpose. He's I do have too. one bit of criticism with this episode. The music? And yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I disagree. Here's the thing. When the soldiers are, like, like converging on them and the fucking funk music's playing, I laughed. <laughs> like, They're I getting laughed. their ass beat to but, mumble rap. You know, I kind of laughed. It's Earth, Wind, and Fire. It is, but it's so... Out of place. Yeah, it's aware. a callback though to what um, what's his name called him when he was like, "Oh, did you see a brother here dressed like Earth, Wind, Fire?" I understand that. I understand that. But it's like it's really funny to me to watch soldiers like slowly like creep up on this cabin, and there's like funk music playing in the background. There's something about that just kind of made me laugh and took me out of it. Mm. Oh, I didn't actually. I didn't mind that. I was laughing at the um, at like the mumble rap being played over the uh the the climax. That, too was really weird too because like there's something about it that just didn't feel right I, it's it's it actually kind of worked for me and i hate I, mumble rap so much um i thought it worked in like a kind of black dynamite kind of way which is yeah it, it like it just totally it seemed to fit um it also i kind of got a mild chuckle out of it because i just discovered this youtube channel called king vader um who did a video called when you don't know who you're robbing and these dudes what? rob a bank, and it turns out all five Power Rangers are there. And then these robbers get their ass beat oh to this, God, like, super it. obnoxious gangster rap. I've seen it. It is yeah. the fucking funniest thing. Like, <laughs> like, like, the music starts playing, and then, like, the bank robbers are, like, really confused and just start kind of bobbing left and right to it. Like, <laughs> I'll share it later on, just for context. Um, but, uh, this was awesome. Uh, and... I Jefferson's dreams were great. Um, I kind of the the one with his dad kind of hit me in the feels. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was really good. Um, I think mean, he gave you great backstory into why he is the way he is. Yeah. But my favorite part was Gamby's superpower of exposition dump. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what Gamby does. He's. The... But like, it was so ridiculous that he's just like, "All right, I'm talking to Jenner." Or is it? Yeah, uh, Je no, Anissa, the younger daughter. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, here's everything. Let me explain. He takes steroids, and then she's a uh, she has armor under her skin, and he shoots these things that are like poison darts that paralyze people. I was like, holy, like, okay. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I mean, and he's like, hang on, I have the script right here. Anyway, he, that that helped because I forgot how um, Tobias worked. I forgot about the serum yeah. thing, so that's why there was this yeah. conversation in the last episode about whether exactly whether he it was on the like, green light. Gamby answered every single one of our questions about, like, every single thing that we were questioning last episode. Like, mm -hmm. why was underneath her skin green? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, Nicole, I think, had some really cool moments this episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, especially when she runs up and gives a superpower hug to her dad. That was great. I, I that was that. awesome. Because he was like, holy shit, she can do that? Yeah. Yeah, because she's, like, the most powerful of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, went. her her bug eyed reaction to her mom pumping a shotgun got uh, a very loud laugh out of me. Oh, oh. that was great. Um, but I really like this. I like these characters as a unit. I'm glad they're all kind of in the same page now. Um, yeah. Especially the last shot of all them jogging together. Um, <sighs> Such a good. And I really, I liked how this whole episode it moved at a at a very nice pace. Like it didn't feel like 45 minutes long at all. Mm -hmm. Um. I liked how this all kind of you had three separate kind of moving plot points that all converged on one spot. Yeah. Because you had the ASA, you had the cops, and you had you know uh, Jefferson's family, all this little cabin, and this it all kind of erupts there. I thought it was really nicely paced and nicely done, and it worked. And before that, you had the whole Lala exposition dump, and then his thing with the ASA as well. Yeah, cause the okay, Lala so is Lala thing, dead again? <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm confused by that as well. I'm also like, I kind of love that Tobias can just, like, buy, like, 
<laughs> revival immortality. <laughs> like he can just like he's like he yo, just... I spent a fortune to respawn you, motherfucker. <laughs> and he said he spent like a million dollars. And then he's like, look, and he like looks at himself. He's like the tattoos. He's like, eh, some side effect. Every person, it's like I'm gonna keep you around so your entire body's covered with all the bodies. Yeah. Like, Tattoo course. man. And he sends him as a bomb and just blows him up. Which I'm assuming that he's gonna like get he puts himself back together. Possibly, maybe. I I, <laughs> I feel like that's a well, if we can re sign this actor, like we can bring him back. Yeah, because I was expecting um, him to or... be like a main villain later on or something like that. Or a major major I, part of it, season two. I really don't want him to leave because I really love his performances, like especially yeah. post his resurrection, like he's kind of creepy like he's this weird calm crazy mm-hmm. yeah he's more interesting definitely after after death um for sure uh and this uh this asa douche who i'm glad they um they really held back on his very relatable and uh relevant shittiness you mean his all rightness <laughs> his, his <laughs> i think he said Make he's it saying, he made, he says make make America great again twice. Like, yeah, just like um, twice. I and he rails it like he ra- he sounds that they wrote him like mm-hmm. every insane right wing I'm not saying all right wing people are nuts, but like the <laughs> most extreme, insane, irrational ones. Yeah. I feel the, like the, the only reason both... they didn't put the hat on him was because they thought that that might like affect sales and like make because the hat I think it's, better. I think it's also I think it's Trump found out. Yeah, well, that and if Donald Trump found out about it, he'd probably be like, well, this show was never good to begin with and it needs to be canceled. Right. Something like that. I and I, I don't need him this. waging war in my superhero stuff. Yeah. He already tried and failed at video games. He tried digging up Jack Thompson's fucking corpse to bring that argument back from the dead. Jack what? Thompson's not dead, but he might as well be. Um, Let's kill him twice. <laughs> 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 First, I kill you. Then I bring you back. He then brings... I kill you again. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's the line from Arkham Knight? He's like, uh, he's like, first, I stop your heart. And then I bring you back and kill you again. I think that's right. Yes, yes. And definitely. then Electrocutioner gets beaten one kick. <laughs> so good. That's the best fucking boss fight in video game history. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. My nose is running. Oh, no. Um, ah. <laughs> show is canceled. Yep, uh, that's it. it. Is. That's, it I've, is. I've come down with the sniffles. That's right. Um, anyway, speaking of Donald Trump, um, yeah, the the bad guy. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love that he's just like he reveals himself to be like a full alt right troll <laughs> dude. He's <laughs> completely <laughs> off the rail. <laughs> so good. And his men are staring at him like, "What the fuck is going on right now?" They're all so they confused. They all were like, where have you been hiding this insanity from us? <laughs> yeah, like, I like how he goes to get that briefcase, and like it goes against every movie trope I've ever seen where somebody fires a bullet into a, an inch wide chain right. and just gets it right away. He fires three times, misses, and goes, fuck it, and goes and hides <laughs> in his secret room. <laughs> that, was, that was great. <laughs> Which is immediately compromised because Black, Black Lightning's whole family shows up. Yeah, like, I was that, like, the only like, this part is great. that confused me. The, worst of this. Uh, the only part that confused me was like the very end was like, so they killed the dude, uh, Gambi kills, and then did they cure those people? Because they can't do anything without the briefcase, but they're all dying. So we well, just we assume know, that they're gonna die. We don't die. know who um who I'm just, I keep forgetting her name. What's his ex wife's name again? Uh, Lynn. Lynn. Yeah. yeah, we don't know who Lynn's uh, mystery ally is yet. So. Right. Yeah, she. Yeah, yeah. It's Which be is like, fine because I don't want to know what's in the briefcase yet, and I don't want to know who that is until season two. Like they've left me wanting. So, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. um, what was I gonna say? Uh, I really liked watching the the ASA dude get like tossed around. <laughs> oh God, that was good. Oh, by the daughter. Like, yeah, she, did the <laughs> she does that, uh... and like, his, like Jefferson's like Nicole. What the hell? <laughs> But she's after, a character like, after, that would do that, so it's, it's... After a half a season of her being like, I'm a freak and I don't want this, and she's like, well, fuck yeah, I'm gonna throw you around this room. <laughs> yeah, this whole, this whole episode is pretty good. I, if, if I have a problem with it, it's that, like, 
it feels like it's leading up towards like a final fight between Jefferson and uh, Whale, and that doesn't happen really at all. Well, I like the fact they're keeping them apart. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to see them have a, a knockdown drag out brawl yet. Yeah. Well, we got to see like a short one, which was great. Yeah, that, Actually, we, like... saw, we saw them fight twice this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they're saving that for next season. My only other, my only other criticism would be that um oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, is that um quote unquote painkiller coincidentally comes off like a bargain bin killmonger. I mean, oh, I mean yeah. Yeah, we saw he that last is, week. I, I, I was like you're, whatever you're you got going on just isn't doing it for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Is that is that like an actual power? That, so like okay. I mean not a not a power. Is that like an actual character in the comics? I don't know if he is. Um, oh, I mean, was thinking, I'm, he, his character's last name is Payne, which yeah. they never mention, I don't think. Hmm. Uh, Khalil Payne, DC. Do, 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 do. Black Lightning TV series, Black Lightning TV series, Jonah Payne from Prime Earth. Hmm. Painkiller is such an edgelord name. It, it really is. is. It's so nineties, like it screams like nineties comics. He's, he's, he's very um uh penance sounding. Yeah. Yes. He's gotta we... put on the suit made of spikes. Yeah. Uh yeah, I am seeing him and he looks really goofy. Yeah, I got painkiller New Earth, uh and a couple other things. Let's see. Oh my god, his <laughs> I wonder if you've seen the same picture I am. I'm gonna oh put mine in the oh chat. Oh god! Wow. <laughs> this is the picture I'm looking at. Oh wow! Oh shit! That's I mean, not that's, even the same. One. That's, that's pretty dude, close like... to what we're getting in the show, though. So, yeah, it's very um, '90s. I, well, do we know when that character first started? Because he might literally be a Killmonger ripoff. Because that's. That's basically he lo- what he looks like in the books. Um, he looks more like a fucking Bishop ripoff. Well, yeah. I mean, Killmonger and Bishop in the books look identical. Have you seen, Have you seen like, classic Killmonger? He's shirtless and he has, like, super long dreads um, most of the time, so. Yeah. Pain cure is so named because of his ability to anesthetize any part of the human body. He uses his ability to shut off a man's legs temporarily. Ooh, that's... He was, create, he was created in 1995. Oh, okay, yeah. He's a he's a Killmonger knockoff, then. <laughs> Probably. Uh, cause, uh... Okay, I'm, I'm looking at a picture. Like I looked up Painkiller, and there's a picture of a Green Lantern with a gun, and I'm just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I found a better picture that's more hilarious. Oh, my, okay. I don't, want to off, I don't want to get off topic, but... um. Um, I just, I have discovered a still of Gotham's official Joker. No, 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 stop, stop, stop right now, stop that. This is the worst looking thing I've ever seen. Can you send it in the chat? I am going to right now. Oh, I've tried to avoid it. Oh, you, oh, fucking get ready for this. You is thought it still this that joke, stupid kid? You thought this show couldn't get worse? Uh, oh no! <laughs> okay. He looks like he's constipated. Also, I I, I watched that clip of his uh, of his creation. Uh, if this show wasn't already committed to taking a heaping shit on Batman lore, it's finished now. Like it's done. This, 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 they've assassinated the history of this character. But anyway, um. Uh... I don't see... <laughs> To get back to the show, uh, I would love to see, see Khalil with that uh, RX tattoo. That looks like an unused prosthetic <laughs> from the mask. <laughs> not like it's... a new, not like a new molding, like literally a mold from 1995 <laughs> that has been put onto a child's face. It looks like shit. It looks like terrible CGI on the mouth. So, is that the uh, same kid? Is that the Cameron it's, kid? Okay, the, tw- the twist is that he had a twin brother. Uh, the oh. Jerome is dead. He got dropped off a building. Um, and he sent his twin 
basically Joker talks in, in like a little package and it sprayed him in the face. So they've completely nixed Batman from his origin. He's not attached to Bruce at all. Um, so there's no reason for him to ever. It's there's no reason for any of this. Is the uh, didn't, long and short. Did we talk about how they're like retconning it or something next season anyway? Uh, this is actually from a headline that says um, uh, season five to be a completely different show. This is up there with making Brainiac wait, 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 a computer wait. virus who takes over a woman's body. <laughs> yeah, this is this is bad. That happened once. Or, that happened in that Superman three. Superman three, yeah. Yeah, there's a woman who gets infected by a computer virus, and they never say Brainiac, but like, it's Brainiac. oh yeah, it turns her into like a weird robot, like shitty yeah. cyborg. Yeah. Not like in like that shitty cyborg woman from the first crossover in the CW. Oh, <laughs> But kind of, only slightly worse than that, and it was like thirty years earlier. Man, um, super. But, uh, Black Lightning was fantastic this week, and like I said, it earned its ending. It earned what happens to that piece of shit ASA agent. I actually I gasped when Gamby just shot him, uh, and like nobody says anything. He just pumps that dude full of lead, and everyone's like. All right, well, whatever, Peter. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it so much because. <laughs> Because he's like, Remar he's like, he's like, he's like, come on, Peter, you're a monster. Blam, 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 blam. Yup. There's, there's no, there's no objection at all either. They're like, okay. okay. Well, he took, he like, they all want to kill him. And he's like, no, you guys need to be innocent. I'll take the hit and just like yeah. shot him in the chest. Yeah, I like how he's like their fucking, uh, he's like their wise guy. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he's willing to get his hands dirty. Also, I said the chat, the flashback sequences with James Remar where they made him look. Like you know, even a little younger was fantastic. I, I I do wonder if that's kind of something we talked about on our Legion episode. If that's just lighting, um, I think it's lighting and the black and white. Which that was the one thing I was confused about. Why is it black and white if it's like the late eighties? Um, because it was thirty. Well, isn't even the eighties? It was thirty years ago. It's twenty eighteen. So it's like eighty eight. Because comics. Um, <laughs> and flashbacks, black and white. You always kind of you can you can. I, apply to flashbacks. I mean, it was also it's it is pre-established within the show that if you're doing a flashback, it's in black and white. Um, so it's yeah, it's a it's an older thing that they've kind of set up previously. Yeah, um, it's not like a all of a sudden they're doing flashbacks in black and white or anything. And I, I like how like it's like that. What happens to the ASA guy is like, there's no is he dead? Is he not dead? That fucker is dead. Oh, yeah. Because he's, Cyanide he's went and dead. cut his thumbs off from the morgue. Yep. That was like so disgusting. Old, he, like, the only thing... Tobias just like, reaches into that bloody-ass bag and just grabs his thumb. I love when he says, like, oh, this next one better work. And he still has the harpoon gun, too, on his desk. I love that he just has a harpoon gun in his desk. So good. He, he's, you never know when you're going to need it. I mean, I I wasn't expecting it the first time he used it, so sure. I feel like it's something he's also, had in the comic books. His name his name is Tobias Whale, and he has a harpoon gun. That's, <laughs> so that's good. Serious, that yeah. We didn't yeah. give that enough appreciation in the first episode. That's because that's that's the best. <laughs> oh god! At least he has a sense of humor. I like that. I I like that too. <laughs> god damn it! See, you see, this is what happens when CW produces a show that we like. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Like, we, that we love. And this isn't a case of, like, it's so yeah. good that we ran out of things to talk about. It's so good that there's just no stuff we can't stop gushing about, especially now that the season is over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind mm -hmm. of absorb it all. Um, like, honestly, I don't really know where they go with season two, because, like, you have Whale took over. You have the vice principals that kind of just left out in the cold. Yeah. She's like the only okay, surviving now, person. Now here's Bye, the bitch. here's the problem you run into with CW, especially Flash season one, awesome. Arrow season one got me into the show, got me to watch the Flash. Supergirl season one, yeah, yeah, you know whatever. Bitch. Um, Legends to well, no, Legends tomorrow is the uh, is the the anomaly because season two it's is the fantastic. Opposite. It's season two is you're like <gasps> it's it's what happens after they seemingly like step into a successful show. It's how they run. It's how they manage the momentum. Is where these people just goof. But because it's a different team altogether handling Black Lightning, I think that's not going to happen. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what they 
they were smart. They would give each show their own team, but then have like the heads of those teams have to like meet every so often to kind of figure out yeah. where the world lies up. And honestly, I think we've been we may be right with the Kreisberg situation. Um, yeah. What probably happened is like a, a a tent pole figure in the creative and production process is gone. Yeah. So there is probably some disarray. Yeah, I mean the. I... Again, the four phones is a joke, but I think it's more real than we than we mm-hmm. think it is. Yeah. I, I remember I, how we used hopefully. to joke that Blake like Blake Neely never left the studio because he was just being handed right. like, "Hey, do this. Hey, do this. Hey, do this. Hey, do this. Hey, do this." Like that's Guggenheim now. Well, he has a partner on all the shows now, Neely. By the way. Oh, he does. <laughs> he does. He has a partner now because. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That's really... Really reactionary. It, it says Neely and then some other guy's name I can't remember on all the shows though. But yeah, he's he has a partner now because I imagine after a certain point it becomes like I can't keep up with all of this. I can't. Yeah. Okay, you, you say it's a partner, but like what it really is is a guy who sits there and he just he's quiet all the time. He's got like a little fucking uh, he's got a little fedora and some creepy big glasses and he just sits there with a small briefcase in his hand and he just stares at Blake Neely and then like. When Blake Neely finally passes out from exhaustion, this guy stands up, opens his briefcase, and jabs him with uh, epinephrine. <laughs> and he comes back. <laughs> Blake Neely snaps back to life and starts making uh, music. Don't your epinephrine conference just give me flashbacks to Flash. Oh no! God damn it! Oh, oh. Uh. I'm awake. Uh, I mean, melt. possibly. Blake, you know, was like, God damn it, Elfman, you stole my Flash theme. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking did. <laughs> like, and here's the thing, like, I was like, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this isn't the same thing. And then <laughs> when you guys confirmed, I was like, yeah, he did steal that theme, he totally did. It's uh, weird, like, the Justice League score is great at times, mm-hmm. like, in, in pieces, but then when you listen to it, like, all together, you're like, this is kind of shit. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing about it overall it feels like a score for a movie that was a uh, ramshackle put together with i generally i generally really like the um the gary clark jr cover of uh come together i think that's a good i think it's a good cover. yeah and like actually the more the more i think about him reusing the batman theme and how the superman theme is used mm-hmm. i'm very bitter about it yeah because like the way the, <laughs> the superman theme is the most insulting part about it bam 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 the Superman one, yeah, that one was not good. That was not. Well, especially when like months prior, he was like, uh, "Yeah, we uh, we use it again, but it's in a moment where you're not really sure where Superman's what he what he's thinking about and where he is as far as his status goes." And, like, it's after they bring him back and he starts fighting people, isn't it? That's exactly what you did, didn't it? Yeah. I'm yeah. sure he was like, "I'll never tell," and then it happened exactly. And then it was. Then yeah. Lo and behold, yeah. we were all right. And then he goes Go back, back to, to writing gnome music. Uh, for, uh... Go back to Boingo, you bastard. No, he's going to be <laughs> writing gnomes forever. Gnomes, gnomes, gnomes. Romeo gnomes. and Juliet coming to theaters, I think, soon, maybe? I don't know. And by gnome music, I mean that thing where it's like, where it sounds, where in his scores it sounds like gnomes stomping. <laughs> where it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Bum, 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 yes. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, His music bum. is very. I've called it. Um. Uh. I've called it. I described it as. Uh. Like, flitty is the word I use because it kind of just like it's music that. I don't like Elfman scores most of them anyway, and like Beetlejuice I love, but other things I love. But mo- generally, I don't like his movie work. Um, I. Because all that's the same. I, I. I. Here's so my my position on Elfman has always been, half of it is just the same thing over and over again and then half of it is fucking amazing um yeah. like you know like uh like, like john williams that much i'm like i'm like john williams just kind of does it's it's big and anthemic scores that's yeah. it that's all he does well again like there are some of them where it's like if you re-listen to the close encounters score he's doing something really weird there um and it's really it's it's really fascinating but then you listen to like the book thief or something like that it's like Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, like, I, Hans Zimmer has ripped himself off before, but oh, yeah. I give Hans Zimmer so much credit because he's like, I'm going to take this guitar string and I'm going to run a razor across it several yes. times. And yeah. I'm going to see what it creates. And then I'm going to create 26 minutes of that. Right. And I'm going to excise four minutes from it and use it as the Joker theme. 
I'm Joking going to Excel. do you have understand? A... He's like, yeah, 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 I get it. I'm <laughs> going to have a chorus chant in Arabic, and then I'm going to write music to that <laughs> chorus. Oh, I love him so much, and like his protege could not be any more like Junky XL. Like, sa- looks and sounds like not looks, but like the music he makes sounds like. Hans Zimmer had like a headache one day and he scratched his head and this like little like lump fell off of him and Junkie XL grew from that lump. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Love oh. the two of them. Anyway, yeah. um, I heard Christopher Nolan actually took like uh, Hans Zimmer's uncut Joker score where he was just experimenting with like horrible noises and like uh-huh. what he could do to guitar strings and like I think cello strings with like mm-hmm. various harsh instruments. I think no one said he was like physically distressed after hearing it because it's just it's just a cacophony of just nonsense. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of like like in the first Alien, there's a moment right after Ash comes out of the or gets the face hugger off, and there are all these like sounds in the background that you might not be like you might not actually be recognizing them, but they're like the sounds of like lions growling and shit, and like weird like predator noises before they pounce um that are in the background and, like... this reminds me and this is a question i think all of us are always gonna have why did the bomb blow up like a jaguar roar in justice league i don't know <laughs> i don't i don't know all right really because don't. it's not a very good movie <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct answer anyway i think we're done from black lightning we can pivot over to arrow now oh i guess my only the only cool question I love is like, do you guys have any thoughts of where they're gonna go? I, I, and that's the thing, I don't know, and yeah. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like wherever they go will be fine. Like I'm, in, I'm into, uh, I'm, I'm so into the show at this point that they really, they can't really fuck it up for me. Um, yeah, my, my only guess of anything is that the wife's friend, I would hope, is uh, that it's John Henry Irons. Oh Ooh. man. I, 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 I will say this. I do want season two to like give us some solid answers as to where this is. Because um, I, I, I don't think this is Earth 1. I just don't. Because I don't think Supergirl is that well known on Earth 1. I think people... Well, they did, they did have a Nazi did. invasion. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think that the... Yeah, but... And they I, mentioned Vixen. Like... Yeah, but like Supergirl in total, she has been seen on Earth 1 twice. Like for like ten minutes from but the she's also of like Earth One Supergirl, so she kind of I feel like she would leave an impression, right? Especially to like young women, like people on this world. Maybe, like, yeah. I don't think she would be well known, which makes me think that this is a different Earth where there is a vixen and there is a Supergirl. Um, uh, I hope that's not it, because that would that would just be dumb to me. Because like. Again, like, I don't think that they would know who Supergirl is. Like, I don't think she would even have a name. I think she would just be that girl that showed up with the Flash. <laughs> the Flash was there with this girl, and she had, like, super strength. Uh, well, here's the thing, too. and here, this, One of the biggest plot holes that I have to forgive about Crisis is that the wedding battle sequence, everyone's secret identity is exposed. Right yeah. Away. Because, like, Barry starts speed-forcing it all over the place, in front of part, like wedding guests, yeah, and like Wally is like doing these fucking cool ass tricks, and Oliver breaks out a bow and arrow from his watch, <laughs> right? Which, which, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's so cool, and I have no idea how it works. <laughs> I mean, he's Oliver Queen. Like, why wouldn't he yeah. have a bow and arrow? So that was a very public display, and like, I think maybe no. in the aftermath, <laughs> someone was like, "Oh yeah, the the super powered blonde was Supergirl, and she'll be back." Sometime soon. Wouldn't it be great if that FBI agent showed back up and she just had footage from the wedding of all of them with the bow and arrow? It's just, it's just, just the wedding snap. photographer. Like the, it's like all the uh, the originals that the wedding photographer had. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, she's like hiding like in a confessional. She's like filming. Oh, God. <laughs> she's oh, like, you have, to, you have to be a real piece of shit to like watch a bunch of gas mask, gun toting Nazis invade a wedding. And be like, holy shit, it's Oliver Queen. Snap. Yeah. Um, speaking of Oliver Queen, uh, Arrow this week was a villain episode. Yes. In so much that they changed the opening logo to a dragon. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's their 
lesser version of the Legion of Doom episode. It is a lesser version because um, I want to like Dragon, but he's he's scratching the surface of being really interesting. But then, like, he's his a little backstory, much. His backstory is a little underwhelming. Yeah, I feel like... only because it's like I'm like we've probably been here with someone else and like it's just like oh I was uh, hold on wait <clears throat> I was mistreated as an orphan <laughs> so I burned myself a few times and if I wanted something I took it yeah it's uh, yeah like I have a hard time seeing how he's different from Tobias Church from last season also um, like with with Hunter Zalman. The version of his story of him being orphaned and going through the system is a much more interesting story because it's a parallel with Barry. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is just like you you are just a you, you are another criminal who went through the system who came out this way. That's it. I don't see yeah. how you're that much different from anybody else. You're well, just think, a little more nastier and that's it. Like, eh. I think all of that was just to like give us like uh to show Laurel Two's mm-hmm. like doubt growing like it's mm-hmm. grow as the episode goes on it's just like visibly growing and then by the end when he burns a man <laughs> to death um she's like what have i gotten into like uh maybe i chose the wrong side yeah which which has also got some holes in it because that woman has had no sincere moments of clarity uh, like really? through lots of murder and like crimes she's committed all of a sudden she's like Oh, he killed someone really kind of, in a nasty way. Maybe I made a bad decision somewhere along the way. Yeah, I, See, I think a... it's also more of like fear. Like, there's, she's like, if I do anything at all to piss this guy off, he will not just end me, but he will end me in a horrible way. Yeah. I... Well, I, th- I think there's a Laurel problem in general. I mean, um, oh, yeah, there there's is. always been a Laurel problem, and now we're gonna have more Laurel. We're gonna have moral. Sorry, um, moral. <laughs> It's Laurel X. <laughs> Dude, the Laurel X design could not be any lazier. Give her a gun. Cool. It's like they gave her a gun and like her jacket is a little bit more kind of pushed okay. out. Okay. And her and her hair is off in a different direction. That's it. Hear me out. Hey. Hear me out. Okay. What if they put a goatee on the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. Actually, Fix. I would actually applaud. <laughs> Fix. Fix. It's done. Crushed it. <laughs> You can take that one for free. Oh my god. Although I was looking around online and I like um, saw someone post, which I thought was a way better idea, if they made Laurel X like White Canary, it would have been way more interesting. Yeah, I mean, and it, it, it fits. <laughs> but that would have well, also think, mean that they would have had to well, buy the another costume. Is, the other thing is, um, there's a very, uh, I think there's a strong swell of prediction that uh, because Katie Lott's going to be on the Arrow season finale, that she's basically going to show up to give Earth to Laura Lance a royal ass kicking, uh, and show Quentin what like his like his, his real daughter is still out there, and this is what it looks like to have a real daughter. Yeah, I, like you, you I think still that gonna... have a real little girl out there, and she's very and she's become something to be very proud of, and like you should not keep. I think they need to kill Quentin. <laughs> yeah, probably. to kill Quentin, I mean, but like fucking get rid of Laurel, put God. him out of his misery. I guess uh, that's what I mean. Like. Like, he's seen his daughters die three times? Yes. And now, now there's going to be two other versions of his daughter? That dude's life sucks. It does. I feel like Nazi... Like, or he's miserable. So Nazi Laurel, I think the point of her is so that... To really, like, cement the fact that there are evil versions of uh, his, like, family members, I, I guess? Like... Like, I feel like it's just a way to, like, bring back well, the, well, what's his name is, as Citizen Gold. But I think Earth-X Siren is showing up on Flash, not Arrow. Yeah, she's on okay. Flash. She's kidnapping Nuclear Douche. Um, and then since... Well, we'll get to it. It's to bring back Citizen Cold. So she, I guess she ends up with Colt's gun at some point? I don't know. Maybe? I don't she, know. She ha- There's, like, an image. She has the nuclear guy... Uh, Caitlin and Joe Cisco hostage. as prisoners. Uh, I didn't see Cisco, but I know Caitlin and Joe. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's Joe, not Cisco. Um, but anyway, yeah, this um, this episode, it. I appreciate. Trust me, 
I appreciate endlessly the fact that they gave us some backstory to a villain. Yeah. But I don't think his story is all that interesting anymore. I actually found the most interesting part to be like the four corners thing. Yeah, I, I was like, that. oh, that's a little bit of a little, yeah, the quadrant, like the that's a little bit of world building which this could use. Uh, it would be, I mean, it'd be one thing if like if we got a little more of it, but he's like, I want to be in the quadrant, and then he burned, and then he like he blows the one dude up and like basically takes out like a good section of said quadrant. Yeah. Um, and then I free, like. I know he burns a dude alive, but I can't remember exactly how this episode ends. Oliver shows up at the end, right? Oliver uh, shows up to tell Felicity, don't worry about it, basically. That's our, like, uh, subplot yeah. with, uh, with Felicity and uh, Mr. Terrific. And I, Okay, so I'm still, okay. When you say to somebody, we're done for good, that means we're not working together on anything ever again, period, right? Am I yeah, the only yeah. one? That's what that means. <laughs> so it means... No startup tech company and no being vigilantes together. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think there's some sort of miscommunication going on here because I don't know. I don't know why I they just... would be working together again. Why he would even want to come to this tech startup. You It's it's a problem with this force team drama is that it yeah. doesn't feel it doesn't feel believable. Mm-hmm. Um it's also it's like... co- it's it's like hamstringing the show because first of all like you you said at the beginning of this fucking season they changed the intro of the show right. to reflect the fact that this is a new team mm-hmm. and then you you went through rigorous effort <clears throat> to try to make us care about them beating the fuck out of each other and yeah. all it was infuriate us and, and here's the thing I've been thinking about it um I think the smarter thing to do would have been to separate them piece by piece um yeah but oh like yeah like they did with john eventually right because i think felicity because i i still think john's episode works better than the entire episode where all three of them are like we mm-hmm. quit and we're starting our own thing um but, it was like john's up, also more they come up earned as, since he's yeah and that and the acting boosted that tremendously yeah. and like everything they said to each other was a legit barb that right. you can't argue yeah, like mm-hmm. if there, if and there then like an it's episode... such, there's, they're being so nasty that like the end result can be like, okay, we're gonna fight now. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, if there was an episode for each character, like giving us specific reasons why that individual character wanted to leave, that would have made more sense. Like, yeah, but instead it just starts with Renee going like, "Hey, he was a bitch." Yeah. And that's basically. Well, the problem is with, fuck you. With um. <laughs> Canary and Wild Dog, like they've been around for like a season and a half ish. Yeah. yeah. At least with Mr. Terrific, he's been there for a little bit longer. Yeah. But I've always really not liked their version of him because they nerfed the crap out of him. He's supposed to be like this <sighs> number two to Batman in like intelligence. Well, I mean, I get that, but it's like like that's why I never got why he was even around. Like he did his skill set, like comic wise, doesn't really fit anything else. He's like Felicity two. I mean, he's. He's there, so they have a gay black character on the show. Uh, it's a, it's a. They, have, but they could have made him because he's not gay in the comic books, so no, like they not. just picked that character and they changed his first name too, which is yeah. really weird. I, don't, I I think that it's okay. If you're in a universe where they've already decided that Oliver Queen is a Batman copy uh, and not. Uh, social justice warrior uh, Green Arrow, uh, as he is in the books, you kind of have to assume that if it's on Arrow, they're not going to do the strictly comic book version. Um, at least that's how I've always like felt yeah. about it. Uh, I get that. It just is like, every time he, like they're like in a fight, I'm like, he just looks so bad. Like He's supposed to be, even in the show, he's like an Olympic athlete, and he's just like, Seems like always the most inept at everything, mm-hmm. and just throws little balls around. Yeah, I've I've always had problems with Mister Terrific, really. Like, well, I he's I, I agree. I think he's a goofy character. I don't know if he needed to be Mister Terrific, like just come up with a new character named Curtis, like, you know. Um, but I, I whatever. I mean, it's we're, we're stuck with it. We're here now. Yeah, uh, but like, like I was saying, like. They had the episode where you could have had Canary really turn on Oliver, and it's the episode with Vigilante. And if they had spent more time earning 
vigilante and earning her starting to fall in love with vigilante again and if she had still been on the team and oliver made the choice that caused her to get really angry at him and that caused her to leave that would have been a more powerful leaving point um like so like there are so many things there's like i could easily see how you could fix parts of the season and make them better um but we're just it's too late now we kind of just have to live with it right. at this point and not just that like they split but she still does a bunch of stuff with Oliver constantly. Yeah. Well, so it's like they split in costumes, but when they're at work, they're cool. And, and like <laughs> we've said it before, their split in costume comes off as silly and petty. Yeah. Especially that that quick cut of them in the fucking van. I can't get over how stupid they look. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. This this season has been it's been mishandled definitely. Um, because like. The first half of the season was really strong. Um, like, yeah, and I and that's I didn't even like Caden James until his last episode. Mm-hmm. I I thought he was, I thought he was building to something, and I was willing to give him the time to build. Um, but I I definitely see like the criticisms and critici- criticisms you had at the time. Um, they're definitely. Hey, I think he would have worked better as the overall season villain. If he didn't do his city takeover till the end of the season, yeah, and or if it like halfway through, if he just let it fall into chaos and we got like a TV Arkham City kind of mm-hmm. situation going on, that would have been real interesting to see. I kind of, but they didn't do that. I kind of like the idea of like dividing it up because I do think that was a smart idea of like we have a part one villain and then a part two villain. Well, um, I, in retrospect, I'm like I'm not even mad about it because. Like the Richard Dragon reveal when he stabs Caden James in in the interrogation room, I was like, "Holy shit!" I didn't see that coming from for, at all. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought they it was successfully, they successfully put uh, Diaz as he was just known as then, like mm-hmm. as this like just goon. He shows up, he gets his butt whipped, and he runs away, and it was just all an act. Yeah. Love... Yeah. Then I don't know. Like this whole season's been this whole season is weird. It's just very weird. Uh, and the next episode just makes me feel annoyed that it's like, okay, I'm going to take Oliver and we're going to have a fight and whoever falls down leaves town. Oh, I, didn't like even, a, I didn't even see the trailer for next yeah, episode. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the trailer. It's like a loser leaves town. Wait, hold on, wait. They're having a pro wrestling match? <laughs> what? Yes, it's literally the two of them shirtless and it's Diaz saying... Like, if you go down, you leave town, no questions asked. If you take me down, I'll leave town, no questions asked. Okay, so, okay. The trailer. If we jump back a year to season five, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and to fucking Kate, or to fucking Chase torturing Oliver <laughs> and tricking him into thinking that he just killed a teenage girl just to piss him <laughs> off, uh, it's like, okay, this is a real, like, it's a real fast way downhill. It's still not as bad as this show has been. I'll tell you that right now. I've seen where this thing can go, and I've seen how bad it can be. And here, here, Like, that's, I think, my biggest problem with Caden James immediately, was because, like, you went from Adrian Chase, mm-hmm. who, like, who said to Oliver in the last episode, I killed your son, and I believed him. Yeah. Like, I was like, holy shit. No, he didn't. Yeah. God damn. And I believed it up until they show William being alive. I was like, this is nuts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I feel like there's... Like, the first half of the season could He's have like just been... He's like a diehard villain. Yeah, like, the first half well, of the actually... season could have just been Caden James as the villain still. Or not Caden James, uh, Adrian Chase. Like, it could have been... <laughs> like, he set up traps after his death. Like, he did things to, like, mess with <laughs> he's Oliver. Like the, he's the jigsaw of the arrow. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Kinda. I, like, I would love it. Like he just like, like he just set up things way ahead of time, and like in in season eight, an episode could happen where it's like, oh, this is was an Adrian Chase plan, and this is something. Well, that that's why when he did when the last week's episode when he showed up it was like it was so, so good because yeah, he's so good, and even as a hallucination, he's so menacing. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because so many so many people copy Arkham, and. Uh, it seems like it's a really easy thing to do, uh, but it, I thought that worked really well. And 
Yeah, yeah. Um, he's just so. He him coming back actually made like highlighted how sort of meh the season is, and that's I think that's my sort of uh, looking back at this whole season. It's just meh. Uh, it's not bad. It's not. Yeah, even it's very. Three it's just bad. kind of. It's not quite there. Yeah, it's just like. Eh. I think that this will be like this is middle of the road. <laughs> That's what this will be where it is the definition. This is this is this is the middle path where nothing is quite great but nothing is quite bad either. Um And like think 